Hey, what is going on, everybody? It's Matthew here, your local bro. We are back at it again with the top five worst teams in NFL history. Not the top five most mediocre teams, not the top five best, the top five worst. The teams that your co workers are making fun of you for supporting. That's right. Uh, yeah, let me know in the comments down below if you, however, uh, have been supporting any of these teams. Uh, let's go. Start by finding yourself a brown paper bag, any size, but make sure it easily fits over your entire head. You yeah. cannot be seen rooting for these teams. Now grab a marker and use the bottom of your cup to trace two large eye holes <laughs> and cut them out. Place the bag firmly over your head. You are now officially ready for today's not top five list. It's gonna be interesting. NFL teams of all time. Let's go. The 1972-1973 Houston Oilers. Okay. Head coach Bill Peterson was in way over his head, taking over the Oilers in the early 70s. But what he did bless us with was the original all-time losing streak. The Oilers won oh. two shocking upsets against the Jets and Colts. But in between those two wins... Imagine it being an upset when you beat the Jets. ...were 18 straight losses. The Oilers <laughs> weren't particularly good at anything. They ranked second to last in both offense and defense. Wow. In their first season with Peterson, they lost by over three scores scores a game. However, no loss was worse than the embarrassing thumping they took at the hands of the Cincinnati Bengals. Mm -hmm. The 61 to 17 loss was the third most points ever scored in a game. Things didn't get better for Peterson's Man. Oilers in 1973 either. They started the season worse than 72, going 0 and 5 with a 20 point losing margin. This Man. was enough for owner Bud Adams, who canned Peterson. His replacement, legendary coach Sid Gilman, didn't fare much better. They only won a single game with an upset Aww. over the Colts. The Oilers just lacked the talent to compete in the much stronger NFL that they joined in 1970, yeah. and it showed. They were outmatched every week. They also threw two interceptions for every touchdown they got. Listen Bro! Again, two picks per TD, not the other way around. That would just not fly in today's league, and neither <laughs> did the Houston Oilers in 72 and 73. Doesn't seem like it. One Baltimore Colts. Okay. You'll notice that bad defense is a recurring theme among all of these teams, but there isn't a more historically sad one than the 81 Colts. They mm -hmm. allowed 533 points and over 6,700 yards, both and what? Over 500 points? NFL records. The 33.3 points allowed per game is still a record. Wait. The records. The 33.3 points allowed per game. It's pretty much, isn't it? It's still a record, even though offenses yeah. have gotten far better in the last 40 years since this terrible team took the field. This wasn't the only putrid numbers the defense became known for. The most touchdowns allowed? 81 Colts. Most first downs allowed? 81 Colts. The least punts forced? Yeah, you guessed it. They opened the season huh. with a win against the New England Patriots by just one Is that the Patriots? Point. And they wouldn't win another game until they met New England again in the final game of the season. There wow. they beat them by two points, setting another record for the narrowest margins of victory in a season. If it weren't for another 2-14 wow. club, the 81 Colts wouldn't have won a game. They lost yeah. each game by an average of 17 points. The 81 Shit. season also created one of the weirdest stories in the world of football. In the middle of a beatdown, Colts owner Bob Ursay took over play calling duties from his coach. QB what? Bart Starr would then call the complete opposite play in the huddle that Ursay wanted. He realized that Ursay was trying to embarrass his own players and coaches and he refused. Why? The 82 Colts fared just as poorly, notching a winless record in a strike-shortened season. We would say things got better, but it took nearly two decades for that to happen. Yeah, 2016, Peter Manning. 2017 Cleveland Browns. Really? The Cleveland Browns don't deserve their awesome fan base. Since reforming in 1999, the Dog Pound has cheered on two, counted two, winning teams. But mm. they didn't hit rock bottom until 2016. Hugh Jackson was brought in as head coach to turn Turn around a 3 and 13 team. Unfortunately, those three wins were more than the Browns would have in the next two years combined. They started six different quarterbacks, with each having as little success as the other. Have you ever heard when somebody says that a team finds ways to win? Well, the Cleveland Browns somehow managed to find ways to lose. Bro, is that the mess that Baker Mayfield would put into? Every Sunday, 2016 brought a 1 and 15 season. The lone wow. win snapped a 17 game losing streak. 
only to match it with another 17-game losing streak right after. If you're keeping score at home, you're right. The 2017 Cleveland Browns became only the second team to go 0-16. Hugh Jackson's team... Bro, that is so embarrassing, bro. Do we have any Browns fans here? Bro, if you are a Browns fan, I'm really sorry for you uh, from this season. Let me know in the comments down below. Like, what was your thoughts when this happened? Your other guys as well. You can, you can let me know in the comments as well. Uh, but how? Like, bro, th that is like insane team was headed backwards it became the butt end of every joke oh. and half of the memes on the internet every game they topped their own incompetence blundering wow. bigger and better chances in the final week of the season they had the chance to not be etched in history against the pittsburgh steelers How? The steelers were sitting their starters because they had locked up a playoff spot but even with most of their starters out the browns still screwed up a game-winning drive ending hmm. their historically miserable season 1976 like uh because you guys said the browns used to be good back in the days bro how do you come to a point like this Tampa bay buccaneers uh -huh. The Buccaneers became part of the NFL in 1976 as an expansion team, and nobody has had more rookie hazing than them. The 76 Bucks are the worst offense of all time, scoring a hilarious oh. average of 8.9 points a game while being- 8.9 points per game! Per game, bro! That's not e bro. Dude, that's not even a touchdown and a field goal per game. Do you understand how shitty that is? shut out in five games Bro. oh wait we forgot something they went winless that's right oh and 14. they only wow. scored 125 total points losing all 14 games by an average of three touchdowns the bucks have an argument for the best of the worst or the worst of the worst regardless it took the tampa bay expansion almost two full seasons to win a football game the bucks <laughs> were led by an all-time florida gator great at quarterback steve spurrier unfortunately uh -huh for them bro it looks like joe montana Spurrier was better fit in college as both a player and a coach what's even crazy about their offense ineptitude is that the following year the buccaneers scored less points a game than the 76 team how it must have been a challenge to show up to work for an offense that only scored one touchdown a game <laughs> now that we think about it they may have bro. been better off not showing up at all 26 straight losses is an Holy nfl record no team is trying to best tampa bay would be hand 26 Six losses in a row. Bro, that's crap. It's down the worst team of all time. If it weren't oh. for a glorious team that somehow lost every contest in a 16-game schedule while looking like an SNL skit the entire time. The 2008 Detroit Lions. Okay. Oh, and 16. The Lions were the first team to ever go winless in a 16-game season. The huh. first thing you think of when you hear 0-16 oh, is the Detroit Lions. The name will forever live in infamy, draped in silver and blue and smelling of unruly stench have you ever seen the movie bad news bears well the lions would have made you think it was based on a true story i just gotta ask like what, did the lions used to be good because from what i have seen they seem to be pretty bad throughout like a lot of years like what have they done with their draft picks it was an absolute circus and no moment symbolized their season more than quarterback dan orlovsky running out of the back of his own end zone for a safety not only was it the deciding <laughs> factor in the, of the 10 loss it was perhaps the worst play of this century as humiliating as it was the weekly product was even more mortifying the lions allowed 32.9 <laughs> points per game oh the my second God. most in a season and they did it in the most comical ways fumbles interceptions getting run over bombs thrown on special Bro, team blunders i mean you name it their opponents who like how can some of these guys be first round picks doubled their own weekly score losing each game by an average of 16 points three different quarterbacks oh started for the lions during the season all with the same results l's the lions threw more picks than touchdowns even with the all-time great receiver calvin johnson to throw to at the end of the season the lions cleaned house firing head coach rod marinelli most of his staff and general manager matt millen they are the worst team of all time based solely on the comical and ridiculous ways they lost so yeah let me know guys like jeez what a video bro i i did not expect this honestly but like I, i'm just trying to figure out how you could how how like the bucks in the 70s bro how can you 
score one touchdown per game and you are like able to draft players i believe in the draft bro that because that is just so that is just completely useless that that is just uh, really hard for me to, of course like i don't play i haven't been playing i don't know how hard it is but i mean like what well, more than a touchdown and a field goal per game should it be that hard uh let me know in the comments if you think i'm too harsh uh, and also let me know if you agree with this list uh, are there any other teams that you would like to mention and if you guys have been rooting throughout any of these teams throughout the history do you re guys remember any of these seasons let me know in the comments down below too thank you guys so much for watching this video don't forget to subscribe to don't miss out on any more reactional content drop a like down below to support your local bro and i'll catch you guys around in the next one